the world right now and the population growth in the human population is is growing at a very fast rate and by 2030 we'll have nine over nine billion people on the planet that means we have to feed people and that means that we need to produce or grow enough food that's safe and sustainably grown to to meet that demand as we expand our reach to grow more food and to produce more animals what is happening is we're encroaching on the natural world and we're actually losing buffers that we used to have before between cities and the countryside or towns so we're we're finding now as uh, many people are aware that you know we have many emerging diseases that are appearing that we hadn't found before and that most of these are from of animal origin so we have to um, uh, be able to be equipped to work not just at the public health end of the spectrum but also upstream at the food production spectrum and this is where veterinarians are involved in helping farmers to produce uh, adequate amount of food to supply the population but also to produce it in a way that is safe so that we focus on animal production but also food safety and uh, so these are these are the challenges that we have and really what we need is we need a uh, a very much stronger veterinary workforce which we lack right now and it's been it's very bad in some countries we only have one veterinarian perhaps or some with none for a period of time or we have some countries where the veterinarians are getting are getting uh, older and they're not being replaced so who's going to take care of that that's a big a big challenge and a need that we have so we need to think about strengthening the veterinary sector and how we can work together with the public health sector that's asking for more um, uh, assistance with zoonotic diseases diseases shared between animals and people and and part of that means an investment in the veterinary infrastructure so we could give you more data or information about rabies or brucellosis or anthrax or Rift Valley fever so that we can provide that information for you. So the, right now, I would say we're, we're at a crossroads where we really need to have this investment and really be able to develop a One Health approach that also includes uh, something I didn't mention is the, is the wildlife aspects because veterinarians do that as well. And a lot of these diseases, if we think about um, uh, Nipah virus, or if we think about Ebola, many of these things are in wild animals or rabies. So then we have to train veterinarians that are also capable of really detecting it furthest upstream and preventing or um, being able to detect early enough that we're not going to have spillover into humans. And as people are flying and animals are moving more around the world too, to transmit and spread these diseases everywhere. So there, there are great needs, great challenges, and uh, but this is why we need veterinary epidemiology because it's really similar to public health. Some of our methods are different, but really it's, it's disease intelligence. You wanna know where it is as fast as you can so you can prevent and control and contain it so it doesn't spill over into people. We have technical training and we're doing field epidemiology training as public health is doing with FETP, which is a model for the world and is so successful. But our, our underlying um, issues really revolve around governance of, of uh, animal health governance, where we have uh, weak infrastructure and infrastructure that is not flexible enough to accommodate currently a One Health approach. It's slowly evolving. So our biggest challenge is really trying to overcome a lot of institutional inertia. At the same time, it's an opportunity because when we train individuals to go into uh, back to their um, workplaces after they get field epidemiology training for veterinarians like ESAVET, then what we're doing is we're actually sending back ideas uh, in the local community and in their infrastructure, which actually drives change from the bottom up. We've seen this with a number of our trainees that we've trained in Asia, and it's starting here in Africa already, 
where they'll be posting charts and disease trend lines and they'll be revolutionizing the workplace. We've had people reassigned from being a laboratory person to an epidemiologist and he's training his colleagues so they can go to the field and do the investigations and do the surveillance. So it's actually driving institutional change from the bottom up. And we're hoping that when we get these successes that the uh, decision makers and top people in the, in the governments will see this as an opportunity to, to promote that and that it will help them to deal with the crisis that come up, whether it be avian influenza, African swine fever, or zoonotic diseases that include brucellosis and tuberculosis and these things. So if there's a success there, it will help that government to be um, to reinforce their programs and their credibility with the populations that they serve and the countries they serve. And ultimately, it's, it's about serving the communities and the people in the countries. So um, at, at one end, it's, it's the biggest challenge, but it's also the biggest opportunity. And I believe the ground up approach from the field level is a very, very powerful, slow sometimes, but a very powerful way of institutionalizing these new mindsets that we need to develop for One Health, yeah. This, this conference has uh, been wonderful. It's been great to be a part of it. I, I, um, my experience with TEPINET goes back 10 years um, and it's always been a hand outreach hand. It's always been reaching out to the veterinary community, inviting us to be part of this global um, epidemiology network, really. Um, so I, I really applaud what TEPINET is doing. I'm just thrilled to be here on behalf of Texas A&M University and the Institute for Infectious Animal Diseases because it's really an opportunity for us to be able to um, participate in the big questions and the big problems of our time really and be have a seat at the table. And when I say that too, I'm very very encouraged by the ability to, to invite a very small population of veterinarians that, that represent the wildlife and the environmental aspects of One Health too, because there aren't many of them, but they're extremely important and they're a very important part of the team and, and need to be at the table. So I'm really grateful to Tefinet and uh, all of your, your vision for doing this. It's uh, tremendous.